And so as a business owner, now is the time to listen up to take your photography game to the next level. When I got a revelation of lighting, my whole approach to photography changed. You know, social media is the way to go to promote your business. And I include my website. Welcome to the social views happening right here in the collaboration studio. If you've been following me on social media, you would know that what this studio is all about and what we're hoping to achieve. So today, I'm super excited to have our first guest, uh, Stephen Greaves, a professional photographer who's here to share his insight into photography. Um, so as a business owner, now is the time to listen up to take your photography game to the next level. This is also our first episode together. So Steve, thank you very much for, for being here. Thank you. And um, I hope that uh, through all these productions and uh, you'll see obviously how things start changing and additions to the studio, know that everything is collaboration based. And at all times, we're going to be sharing what we're doing, how we're doing it. So because it's the first one, I need to make mention of Woodbender, who very, very generously sponsored us with these couches. Um, so we're sitting on couches today, sponsored by Woodbender. We've got our feet on a carpet that is sponsored by the Persian Rug Lady. Both of these companies are situated in Strand, uh, Somerset West. And uh, just want to say a massive, massive thank you for believing in this vision. And let's get this started. Stephen, welcome. How's it going? Yeah, it's great, man. It's great. Great to be here, man. Thanks for the invite. I really, really appreciate it. To give some background to the viewers, how Stephen got here. Um, was actually through a WhatsApp message. I received your WhatsApp message and uh, wasn't actually sure how you got my number, where it actually came from. We haven't had that discussion yet. Um, but the long and the short was I saw that there is potential here to share some insights around photography because it's very specific to social media. Um, and of course, any business owner that's looking to put their products out there needs high quality footage, needs high quality videos, but not everybody is really geared or is able to take photos properly, take videos properly. At least we try. But, you know, we've got technology like cell phones. And I'm really keen to just dive into kind of how you've seen the spectrum change, how you've started, you know, when you started 30 odd years ago. What have you seen change through to where we are today? Um, and please share a bit about, about you. Okay, I think it's very, very interesting, um, the point we are at now and how digital photography has taken off. Um, I started photography, I was in, I, I was still at school, I started with a little Mick and Druck film, hey, the wow. little canisters in there and so on. Uh, and then I went to Natal Technicon and I studied photography there. I, I just, I've been doing photography all my life. I just right from school, I knew that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. I got into photography from reading surfing magazines and I'm still a surfer, not as much as I used to. Um, and anyway, so, you know, surfing magazines are not just about surfing, it's also people and places. So it's Oof. travel. That's the best so there's is. portraiture, landscapes, etc. So. Because I looked, I had hundreds of surfing magazines, so I had an eye that helped me develop my eye, photographic eye and an eye for composition. Um, so, so then I went to the army for two years. Oh, that, I, I don't want to talk about that yeah. right now. <laughs> After the army, I enrolled Natal Technicon two years. After that, I got a job at the SABC, Johannesburg. Um, my first year, I was there as a news uh, videographer, news cameraman. What are we talking about? This is, are we still 1986. Wow, so we're still a good, long almost time, 30 years Long ago. before digital. Jeez. Long before digital, well, you know. my time, just for Yeah, record. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, um, and so, uh, and then, but I was trying to get into the photography department. Eventually after a year, a post became vacant for a junior photographer. I got the post and I, and I started as a junior photographer and I worked my way up to a senior photographer. At the SABC, I did, you know, a, a lot of what we call publicity photography and all the movies, TV shows, uh, all the game shows the radio shows. I worked on Arende, Ballade for the Enkelen, Achte Elke Mann, um, Do you know what a was lot like, of that. For me, as, as like a youngster, like I've heard these names before. Yes. Like I've heard these words before. So I know that it's deeply ingrained in like South African culture. Yeah. Um, and like it's very, very old school. Yeah. So it's, it's actually for me 
very cool to sit here with someone who obviously before my time but was part of stuff before my time and was part of like all these productions and stuff because i can imagine it must look completely different to what it looks yeah. today i mean yeah and i wasn't very specific or it wasn't necessarily you know having the the little thing where you got to light the powder and to make no, it flash. No, that things. was before that my far back, time. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still interesting to see, yeah. like, even the size of the cameras, like how that's changed. Yeah. Um, and, you know, even thinking, had social media been around that time, like, how would we have put photos on there? Like, yeah. obviously, the tech wasn't there and the internet wasn't there. But, you know, even just going through that little phase of photography. Yeah. It, it built the it built obviously what we know now but, yeah. but i feel like there's still so much skill and so much culture stuck in in the old way of doing it sure. you mentioned sure. that um you were with me live on on yeah. radio halderberg the other day and you spoke about um you know how how cameras have changed over time and yeah. how things have become um almost i almost want to say like it does it for you but there's still so much skill you still need absolutely. to understand as you said composition and balance. lighting 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 most important when i got a revelation of lighting my whole approach to photography changed once i got a revelation of lighting it makes a massive difference absolutely right? and your camera can't tell you about lighting you need or to know composition mm. you see so uh, that to me was was like a real breakthrough in my photography uh, life or career you know but it's it's very interesting i'd like to recommend a movie for you to watch and for for your viewers to watch called press pause play press, now i pause, think play. you'll be very interested in this it's a movie documentary um, and they interview a lot of um, artists in photography and videography, filmmaking and musicians. Oh, cool. And they put up this question. The question is, has technology destroyed creativity or enhanced it? So that's the basic. That's the I've, question. I've well, let me tell you my question. view. Go for it. In the film, what they do, they interview uh, musicians like Moby and, and others. You know, it's brilliant. It's a brilliant movie, very in depth. But the point is this. For a musician, back in the day, let's say Led Zeppelin. Now, John Bonham was the drummer of Led Zeppelin, right? You get him in the studio and they got to do take after take after take until it is done mm. properly. Whereas nowadays, you can just do a half ass <laughs> take, the drummer, and your technology is going to sort, sort it out, out. for you. That's so incredible. in some ways, look, I love modern technology. I love digital. I think I told you the other day. I, I really, I've developed thousands and thousands of rolls of film in the darkroom. I've made hundreds of thousands of prints. I've still got boxes and boxes of black and white prints and color <laughs> prints that I've printed in my studio. I've got files and files and files of film negatives. Yeah. But, you know, so I've done my time in, I've done time it's in, in darkroom jail, yeah, let's say. I love darkroom <laughs> jail. I put my music on and, you oh. know, chemicals and all that. But, you know, there's, there's a sort of romanticism attached to old school analog sure. and film. Mm. Now, I've been there, I've done that, I've got the T-shirt, etc. I love digital. Uh, you know, analog, it's, it's uh, time consuming, it's not cost effective, it's very labor intensive, mm -hmm. whereas digital is not. Mm -hmm. I love Photoshop, I love Lightroom. I love the creativity that it allows me to express. Sure, sure. Back in the day when I was working in the darkroom with prints, we had to do all sorts of things like sandwich our negatives, to get a certain, like, let's yes, say, crazy. effect. Like you know, you're, you're talking about you're things just, that I have no idea about. Yeah. And it, for me, being someone that, so I, like I often tell, oftentimes tell people I need to find out how something works. I will go and find out why that person thought of making that thing in the beginning sure. of time. I need to go down rabbit holes. So for me, it's, it's actually quite shocking to not even know that, like, that's the way you guys used to edit for lack of a better word yeah and to get different process effects. Edit, yeah. right so and and that was like physical processes that had to yeah. actually take place to get that composition or to get that color yeah so that that is crazy and yeah if you compare it to today's times i mean you just swipe right put a different filter on and there you well go. you know it might seem like that but not really hey I, i'd like to counter that narrative yeah, absolutely. because when you get into photoshop or lightroom it's massive it's big your creativity is endless mm -hmm. 
but it also all depends on the operator, on the photographer, on the artist, on sure. the photo artist. Sure, junk I in, junk out. I love digital art. I love digital art, creating my own digital art, and you're working in layers and so on. And you can work for days on one image. So there's no such thing as just popping a little filter. That's probably for, you know, Instagram filters and that. And, um, you know, so, so I think, you know, Digital has got, for me, my approach di to digital is got just as much soul, soul as analog or film. Yeah. I've been through my whole journey of film, whether it's 20 years or, or whatever, I can't count now. <laughs> but, but my approach when I come to digital is exactly the same. I still invest my whole emotions, my soul. You know, you can get photographers or artists that are technically proficient, but they got no soul. Right. There's right. no substance in their work, but they got the sharpest lens. Yeah. I, I, man, that I don't yeah. resonate with that. You know, I resonate with true artists. You know, wherever they are, true artists will find something to photograph or to paint or to depict. Of course. You know, but very interesting. This movie that I was telling you about, the documentary "Press Pause Play," mm -hmm. is that. Um, you see, technology can be your friend or your enemy. So it can make you lazy or it can help you to be more creative. Yeah, so it really depends on the approach. Mm -hmm. And that is what they discovered in Press, Pause, Play. Uh -huh. You see, so uh -huh. technology is not the enemy. How, what is your approach? That yes. technology is not ruling me. I love that. Now, on Instagram, yeah, and Snapseed and all that kind of thing. I've got Snapseed on my phone and Instagram and so on. And it's wonderful sometimes. I mean, I, I'm out and about and I don't have my beast with me. That's my, my big time, my, my big yeah, camera. Press flash. Like the yeah, lights yeah, have to yeah, dim. yeah. <laughs> not the one with the powder. Oh, no, yeah, no, not that one. Not that one. And, <laughs> and then I'll use my, my cell phone, you know, and I can pop it onto Instagram very quickly. So I I'm very, very big on creative vision. Ah, there's the word. Creative vision. That's your soul. How much are you investing in? Do you have vision? Some because people don't have it. Like a, a video. Then it doesn't matter what camera or you've got. I, I absolutely, absolutely agree with you. And because, so I'm, I'm speaking more from, from a social media, advertising, marketing perspective. It's, it's, it, it would be very naive to say that a photo or a video mustn't give you a certain feeling you need to feel kind of what's being communicated what's being talk shot. about an emotive response that is there we go there when we, we go. were I'm, I'm also a photography lecturer so when i teach my students you know when we look at what makes a great photograph I, i've got like about 20 or 21 points criteria that I've come up with in terms of composition, decisive moment, shallow depth of field or great depth of field. There, there's so much, you, you know, know, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your technique, it's all like creative arrows in your quiver. Mm. You see, mm. the way I look at my photography is based on my training and my intuition. Sure. Sure. You see, so there is obviously intuition is a big thing. Like you need to, there's there's a reason why you create depth between subjects. There's a reason why you have a light in a certain. And so it's yeah. fascinating. So it's the it's the marrying between your intuition, your personal creative vision that takes time to develop. Sure, it doesn't just happen. Mm. It takes time to develop, and as you immerse yourself in your art and your craft your creative vision starts developing. Mm. If you don't have a creative, a personal creative uh, um, uh, vision, you're just, you're either going to be a copycat, a plagiarist, or, or your, your, your work is not going to have an emotive response, you sure. see. Mm. So an emotive response, well, that's, that's the key. But you need to know and utilize and and really get immersed in different techniques and study the old masters. Do you, do you, do you feel though, like with, with social media now specifically and, and touching on that, the art of creating content and the art of taking photos, do you, do you think it's being lost? Or do you think we, we may be just seeing a different version of that? And when I say that, like, I, I, I have to understand that the 21 year old of today or the up and coming influencer or content creator may not have the skills to understand all that is photography 
but yet I still see really incredible content being created by, for lack of a better word, amateurs, but uh, amateur in the sense of experience, but absolute professionals in the way that they know how to use this slider, just drop that little thing there, add something in the corner and take a video for three Absolutely. seconds, but do it this way. And it, it gives you this completely, completely different feeling. I am so excited about today's young crop oh, that's awesome. of photographers, videographers, you know, content creators like yourself. For me, as a bit of an old dog, you know, I'm so super excited when I see the talent mm. that is coming through, whether it's on Instagram, especially Instagram. Yeah, I mean, I mean you know, I follow a lot of artists on Instagram, artists, photographers, and so on. And what young adults are doing, like you say, from 20s, even younger sure. and, you know, young adults. Those are typical it's high school incredible. students. And, and so, some are self-taught, mm. some are self-taught. But my feeling is that if you want to progress, go get training, go get training. But if, if, you, if you're not going to get training, you, you might have a natural flair sure. or a raw talent. Sure. That just and needs that, refining. But they're rare. Mm. They're rare, those that have a natural, and they're driven. Mm. They're driven, you see. Now, if you're not driven, you don't have creative vision, um, and, and you don't have that raw talent, then, but you'd like to, but you don't quite know, you, you go get training. And even if you've got a raw talent, I would still recommend training. Absolutely. Because Refused. you start talking to older photographers like myself, I've got a lot to share, mm. you know, my practical experience, you know, and when we start talking and, you know, I, I believe in impartation. I'm a great believer in mm. impartation. Sheesh, sheesh. So you hang around with an older photographer for a while, you're going to pick yeah, up certain things, you, you know what I mean? I call it impartation. So, but yes, to get back to your point, I'm super excited. Some of the work I see is mind blowing. So and cool. even for me, I'm going, man, these Can dudes, these like guys, that? these 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 girls are like, they, they're young, but look what they're doing. It's incredible. Yeah. And a lot of them have a natural flair or what we call an eye. And then they, they learn techniques. Now, I mean, Instagram can be quite forgiving. Sure. sure. Now, 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 let me tell you one or two things that are quite kind of, uh, kind of funny for me in a way. Um, you know, you get a lot of Instagram filters. Some of them are called light leak. Yeah, yes. The Instagram borders and Ooh, so here's on. one for the content creators listening. No, no, no. You know, there's a photograph that we might talk about later that that you know about. Of now, course. in this particular photograph, you'll see the border. Should we just do it? Yeah. But why not? So, yes. All right, Steve. You are actually uh, apart from the Persian rug lady and uh, woodbender. You're the third person that has graced us with a gift. So. Thank you very much for this. And it actually becomes a talking point. An and we'll cut this into to the final edit afterwards. But okay. give us a bit of background about this image. Because I, so of course, I'm, I'm, I'm not in any way a professional when it comes to photography. However, I can evaluate and appreciate a good photo. Now, when we came up the stairs earlier, you mentioned that this is 30, 40 years old. At least about 30 or so. Yeah, right, I my, to work it out. My head goes straight to... You guys did not have the technology no. we have. And even Long to create a photo, Photoshop. even to create a photo like that today, yeah. using the technology of today, still seems like yeah. quite a feat. So give us give us some feedback on that or give us some background. What, what are we seeing? So this was a photograph I did for an ad agency called Euro RSG. It was for a product, a man's deodorant and aftershave called Rebel. Ooh, you see, so now the marketing me is this coming out. Is Let's the look Rebel. at this. This is the rebel. Right, right. So this was shot at uh, Johannesburg uh, Brackpan Mine Dumps. Oh, wow. At the top there, that's Brackpan Mine Dumps. So this is in South Africa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. So now I was mentioning about Instagram borders. You see this border around the photograph. You see how rough it is? Yes. Now I took my negative carrier in my enlarger in the darkroom and I got a metal file. And I filed the inside <laughs> of that negative carrier. Now, you don't know what I'm talking about, negative Not carrier. Not at all. I know what a negative so is. But, 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 but anyway, so this border is achieved the really old school way 
physically with a metal file in the inside of my negative carrier, then when I print the actual photograph, you get this rough border. Yes, that's cool. Now on Instagram, you can just, you just pop the it button in and because uh, they've cloned it or as a filter. So of course the filters of today are getting and inspiration. Because, yeah, and because old school is pretty popular. It is. You know what yeah, I mean? Look how cool it is. Yeah. <laughs> Come you on, that's I mean? epic. So I feel quite cool at my age now that <laughs> old school is still, I'm, um, you know. You are quite know, cool still. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. <laughs> so in any event, so this, to do this whole thing took me probably a day because wow. what I do now, I get back from the shoot, I've got to develop the film. That takes a few hours, develop in a tank, you know, b b uh, chemicals, <laughs> developer, water fixer. Then I've got to hang it up to dry in the drying cabinet, go for coffee, carrot cake and whatever, come back. And then I take the negative and then I've got to print it, make a print and also in a wet dark room. So your developer, wash, rinse, uh, fixer, etc. Then I hang up the print. Then I have to sepia tone the print. Can you see it's a bit brown? Ah, see, so there's, there's another little filter name that's come out there. Sepia. sepia. Now right. sepia, you're just doing the click of a yeah, button. Just, just Do you know it. how to sepia tone this? Cliche. It's sepia tone chemicals and it smells like fruit eggs. It's sulfur. That is it's incredible. It's sulfur. And that, that's how you get that color? That's the how sepia we look? get the brown the brown look, that's the sepia or copper tone. It's actually more copper tone. I prefer the copper tone to the sepia. Sepia is a bit more yellow. All right. I like the more brown copper tone, rich. You see, it's a little bit faded now, I think. But, um, and so then I do that. That takes about an hour. It smells like fried eggs. It's terrible smell. <laughs> it takes me back you know to like yeah. primary school, chicken mayos. But yeah. The number one rule in the dark room, no fighting. <laughs> But okay. Just blame it on the yeah, sepia. Yeah, Come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unless you're sepia toning your product. Right, there we go. <laughs> Did you just drop a sepia? <laughs> ah, all right. It can one, become a thing. Photography jokes. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and then I colored in the uh, cars and, and the model with a uh, paintbrush. So you colored that in actually? Yes, with photographic dyes. <laughs> so you got it, you, you know, you, you sit there for like, Hours, hey, and and you got uh, coloured and everything so, with with a paintbrush and photographic. Like we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll cut this into the final edit, but what yeah. what most people need to actually see here, which I noticed, is the reflection of the lady in the in the car there. So that was coloured in afterwards. Yes. Yes. Well, yeah. you you can see the reflection in the actual print sure. because it's just, just like whitish. It's, it's just white. But I know. Well, that's the reflection. You see. With my work, when I do digital art or I'm, I'm, I'm going to color, you know, something like this, I, I want my work to be authentic. Ah, Even with digital art, I'm not going to do digital art that looks fake. Love. That looks fake. It's got to, if I'm going to work in layers and so on, I'll show you another photograph sometime that I'm very proud of. I took of a friend of mine, Christelle. And um, it's it's different layers and, and it, there's different ghosting images and so on. A lot of technique. A obviously. lot of technique, mm. also a lot of time That's it, and it? Photoshop layers. But, I just want to say um, thank you again. This oh, is it's a pleasure, man. Amazing, it's an absolute amazing pleasure. Picture. Now, I thought I'd bring this for you as a, as a gift. <laughs> that is very and, cool. And um, it's going to look amazing on this wall. Yeah. yeah That's what I'm um, looking forward to is, and, and especially in this space, sorry, I'm digressing slightly. No, that's all right. Is with all the people that we interview here, whether it be professionals in certain industries, celebrities, content creators, influencers, each and every one of them are going to have the opportunity to see this. So it doesn't only become a talking point, but I'm I'm super excited to see how this wall and what we're yeah. doing here is is yeah. going to grow. So just yeah. a major major thank you, really. It's, no, it's, it's an very, absolute very cool. pleasure. It's a beaut, eh? It is. A, it's an amazing. It's a beaut. It, it sits like it, it like it's grabbing my attention. Yeah, the whole it's quite time. hypnotic, eh? Yeah. It's yeah. very cool. I think I, I I think I really appreciate the the time and the effort of actually creating yeah. this in the first place. And it's got that whole 1950s mm. Americana nostalgia. kind of oh. feel, the nostalgia. Very cool. You know, James, you start thinking of James Dean, yeah. that kind of vibe, Americana, yeah, right? You know, so Americana. it's got a certain Very kind cool. of vibe to it, the muscle cars. And did you notice something? Look at the number plates. I was going to ask you earlier, I saw the one on the left-hand side say Studio 7. Right. So, so the only thing I did on Photoshop 
Because I'm gonna, I'm I gonna... scanned in the print yeah. that I coloured in and everything, and and I, you know I've got this print, you know, and I scanned it into um, onto my PC, and in Photoshop I, I put in Studio wow. Seven into the yeah. number. So now we now we're seeing analog and digital. Bit of subliminal. Yes, that's very really cool. I see. Yeah. I, I saw what you did. I was yeah. actually wondering if I should ask yeah. if it was. Did you paint that in as well? No, no, <laughs> that was. That's a very yeah, cool touch. Was, yeah, so does so does this mean yeah. that you're the badass? Because you put it on the on the on the the bad guy's car. Yeah, the rebel. The rebel. Sorry, not not bad guy. <laughs> on the rebel's car. I'm right. with the rebels and the renegades. Love it. We All swim against life. the stream. We swim against the stream. So the purpose of this uh, the show, as I said to you earlier, is we're we're trying to impart as much knowledge, and insight and how tos, so that people can essentially help themselves. That is that is the whole purpose here. So I'd like to I'd like to spend a bit of time maybe just chatting about some of your personal experiences going from so we've chatted kind of how how you've got into this point through experience and and you've been involved with a lot of things but there's something very exciting coming up and i really want to dive a little bit into that what was the thinking behind it how did you get to the idea and that is the 52 lighthouses yeah um that that you're involved yeah. on soon potentially yeah. starting Absolutely. 2024 Look, the sooner I get started with that, the better. The sort of date I was hoping for was June. This year? This year, yeah, but I'm quick. starting to think I'm being a little bit overambitious. Give us, give us some background. Of what, what is this project? Was it, I know it's a passion project and yeah. we, we spoke about it. Absolutely. And I really want you to, to share your heart on what okay. is this project and why. What is the purpose? What is the meaning? What are the, I know there's a couple of signs and there's some inspiration. Please share. I've always been interested in lighthouses and I started photographing lighthouses about a year ago. And, um, and my, one of my nicknames, I've got a few. Why lighthouses? I, it's, it's, it's difficult to um, describe or explain. It's something you're drawn to. It's almost like you're compelled. Okay. For instance, I'm also drawn to windmills. Okay. Now, you can't, I can't tell you why I'm drawn to windmills. Mm. It's, it's one of those things as a photographer, an artist, I look at an old rusty oh, old it windmill. It looks so cool, right? And I'm just drawn <sighs> to it, the rust, the texture, mm. The, the feel, background, it's the an fields. emotive response. Oh, okay. I'm just compelled to photograph it. Okay. And I think sometimes in life you almost pulled or drawn somewhere almost divinely inspired in a sense, if I can put it that way. Awesome. And, um, and so, you know, a beautiful woman that I, that I once knew, she actually um, called me Stevie Lighthouse and so the, the nickname stuck. And then I started doing podcasts. So your under, Instagram handle, Stevie yeah, Lighthouse? Yeah, I've got an Instagram handle at Stevie Lighthouse where I put and some podcasts and I, and, I, and, I, and I like to post encouraging messages on there, especially to encourage the youth of today or Love the it. young adults, not just specifically, I mean, but but my heart is really a lot with the younger you And know, that was kind adults. of the inspiration behind the, the Lighthouse project. Yeah. Well, Yes. So the, the initial idea was, I wouldn't say selfish, but it was the initial idea was, hey, man, I, want, I, want, I really want to photograph more lighthouses. I photographed a few so far. Uh, and then I started thinking, well, I wonder how many lighthouses there are in South Africa. So I didn't know. Maybe there's 800, maybe there's 600. I didn't know. So, so I'm actually not going to say how, how many there are because I actually want if you... If you think you know how many lighthouses are in South Africa, drop it in the comments below. Uh -huh. I'd love to find That'd out how many other people, yeah. or how many, how many lighthouses yeah. other people out there think there are they along are. the South African coast. Yeah. So we're talking from what is it? Uh, what what's the most furthest east? Durban, right Durban. Up to Mozambique. So from the Mozambique, from Mozambique border, Mozambique all the way up to the Namibian border. Incredible. Yes. So I know how many there are. So I know what the context is. Yeah. So, so try not yeah. say too much about what the, okay. how the project will play out. <laughs> but if you listen carefully, you'll get the answer shortly. Yeah. So, so that was, I, I thought, wow, I'd love to photograph every single light. So it was like a light bulb moment. Pardon the pun. It was wow, like a light you. bulb moment. <laughs> it was like, well, I want to photograph every single light. And then how long is it going to take me? Here's a little clue. A year. A year. So it's going to take it's a whole year. It's going to take year. me a year. Shooting 
two lighthouses a week? One lighthouse a week. <laughs> One lighthouse a week. So there's your clue for your Bang. viewers, all right? That is incredible. So the idea is that, and then I started, and, and a lot of this didn't come to me like, you know, it just came to me. It wasn't like I sat down and, and said, okay, now this step, this step, this step. For me, I work a lot intuitively. Mm-hmm. I work a very much my whole, you know, up, up emotional intelligence. Sure. Uh, that's how I sort of, I tend to, you know, uh, approach things. And, and so then I started thinking, well, how can I attach this? Well, I didn't even really think like that. It, the thought just came into my mind. Well, look, you know, at every lighthouse, I'm going to find either school or church hall there, and I'd like to share my story on how I've battled the demons of depression and addiction for, for most of my life. And overcome. Yeah. Uh, it's something that I think you take a day at a time. You so, deal with. So, yeah, it's a day at a time kind of thing. You know, sometimes they rise up again, and, and you you got to, you know... Mm. Yeah, there's ways to handle it, your triggers and all that sure, kind of sure. thing, you see. Um, but I've been clean and sober now for, for uh, quite a number of years now. Incredible. And, uh, but one never takes it for granted, put Absolutely. it that way, you know. Absolutely. So then I thought, well, you know, and I'm a photography lecturer as well, and I, I teach a lot of youth. And so your, your photography studio's name? Or your uh, name? Studio 7, Photo Design School. And that's same uh, on Instagram as well. And that's on Instagram, yeah, Studio 7 Photo Design School. And, and you know, as I've been doing my Stevie Lighthouse podcasts, you know, I, I did, I tackled the, the issue of addiction. Mm. And one of the addictions we have in South Africa that's off the charts crazy is pornography. Yes. Mm. There was a Sunday Times article about a few months back and in report about children as young as five being addicted to pornography in South Africa. The addiction is getting worse and worse and worse and worse on pornography and drugs and alcohol. You see, yes, absolutely. What we can maybe do uh, is I'll send you the actual cover, the article, and then you can maybe pop it and cut it in or something. Absolutely. And um, so I started thinking, well, as I go up the coast and that, I'd like to try and how can I give back to a community? And the, one of the ways I can do that is sharing my experience, my battles with I the demons that. of pornography, addiction, drug addiction, and depression. Because they all sort of like twin sisters, mm. the evil twin sisters, you can say, you know. And so, so that, so a large part of this project the lighthouse project we're calling it i'm calling it shed the light oh no shed the light and i can't take credit for shed the light it's a friend of mine her name is donahue and we were chatting and and she was one of the first people that I, i i sort of approached for like feedback on this project and she said to me, hey, Steve, let's call it the Shed the Light Tour. So I, I said, it. yeah, I that's fantastic. It makes so much sense. Yeah, it makes so much sense. It's amazing with this project how afterwards it, it feels like everything's lined up. You, you know what I mean? Like, the, the, like there's it's a too purpose. good to be true. Yeah, there's oh, a purpose it. behind it, it which I it. didn't think of in the beginning when I started the project. In the beginning, it was just, I want to photograph these lighthouses. And to tell you the truth, I wanted to like leave, I need some space. You know, sometimes <laughs> the, good reason to the break busyness away. and the rat race. And, and I thought to myself, you know, I, I want to hit the open road. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so that's how it kind of started. So that's the idea to create awareness and raise funds for you know communities the help community themselves. to help Love themselves it. there are other different charities so i'd like to start a stevie light a launch a stevie lighthouse foundation brilliant and that foundation will um <coughs> uh, solicit funds and from that foundation 
we will try now and assist different rehabs across South Africa. Brilliant. Those that are deserving, you know, rehabs. There are a lot there that are like, you know, sure. charlatans. Sure. So sure. you have to really use your discernment mm. to find the real ones. But I believe we will. You see. Uh, you said so. so that's the whole idea. Now, now after the tour, I want to publish a book. And it won't just be the photography and the lighthouses, but also in the people and places that, uh, that, that I met along, along, the, along the way, yeah, that's cool. um, as well as a documentary, a film documentary, as well as prints afterwards, life-size prints of every single lighthouse. Yes, and notice I didn't brilliant. mention how, how many, many there are. Nice, nice. <laughs> so it's a big project, massive project, very close to my heart. It's a dream. And if I may, I'd like to just say I am looking for collaboration awesome. and I am looking for funding. So Brilliant. if, if uh, any if of your is, viewers are absolutely. able to, they can contact me. I've started a website. It's stevie-lighthouse.com. And how do, like, I'm, I'm assuming on that website as well, because you will keep it updated, your social channels will be updated. But where, where would the best place be for people to follow along on the journey? Because I think... Or not, I think I know that you will most certainly be successful in the communities that you reach purely because your heart's in the right place and yeah. you're doing the effort to actually go and get something for the lighthouses. Yeah. But while you're there, through all of this, you're able to help those smaller communities, which I think is absolutely awesome. But one thing I know that you are going to be able to capitalize on is the awareness yeah. around not just the causes, yeah. be it the pornography, be it the addictions, and I think there's addictions that we don't even know about. Like yeah, that is the absolutely. worst part of it all. Absolutely. Because you blew my mind with five-year-olds. Like that, the, I'm, I'm struggling to, to yeah. process that. Yeah. But it's ridiculous. Absolutely. But what I think you will end up doing as well is making some serious waves online. Yeah. And I'd love for people to, to follow your journey. Yeah. So are we, I mean, the best would be obviously Instagram because I'm sure you'll be yeah. having um, daily updates there. Absolutely. Does that page exist? I'll probably do, yes. There's uh, Stevie Lighthouse on Instagram and on YouTube. Awesome. And my thinking is to do um, weekly episodes. All right, nice. At the end of each week. Give us like a catch-up Because catch -up I'll be been... traveling in a camper van on my own with all my photography gear and so on. I'm going to love it. I'm going <laughs> to absolutely love it, hitting the open road. I need to I'll probably also go through Namibia, Botswana, and maybe Mozambique, and then come down the East Coast. So I'll Brilliant. go up the West Coast first. Um, so the idea is to do one podcast per week. Brilliant. And then I'd like to ask you if you could also be involved and assist me with that kind of thing. Always. And maybe I've got a YouTube channel, Stevie Lighthouse YouTube channel, which, which I'll utilize. But I think, uh, you know, your channel and your experience Absolutely. will really help me. So if, if we could collaborate, that would be wonderful. Well, exactly. My, my whole heart is about collaboration. Like I absolutely yeah. love the concept. I don't believe in doing things for free and getting things for free, but if it makes sense for both parties, and I mean, that's why the studio exists in the first place, is to to empower collaboration. I think that where the world is moving to, where we as humans and humanity is moving towards, I think like we've become a really, really selfish bunch of people. Sure. And I really feel that there's so much on the table for collaboration and partnerships and working together. I mean, here is a brilliant example he has couches standing here. He has a carpet standing here. I didn't have to physically pay for it. Yeah. But through this collaboration, yeah. there are miles for the person that gave these couches or sponsored yeah. these couches. Yeah. Just as there is for the person for the carpet, just as there is for the people that sponsor the coffee. Yeah, and I, I feel like collaboration and partnership is, is the new barter. Absolutely. Like I, I think the barter system is something that we're missing out on hard. Yeah. Because they gave you judgment. You know, mm -hmm. is this fair? Is this not? Now, now everything just has a price. Now it's yeah. just a, it, it costs that what it's yeah. a number, and you've got to deal with that number. But I kind of feel like collaboration and and that way of bartering mm -hmm. opens up so much more potential. But you're also a lot more authentic because you want to do it. You Absolutely. don't have to do it, yeah. and I, and that's the part that I love the most. Mm -hmm. So how uh, we, however we can collaborate moving forward, by all means, we're definitely on board. Very very cool project. Fantastic. Looking forward to that. So hopefully by June, July. 
Hopefully, if everything goes according to plan, I still need to do quite a bit of fundraising. I'm still sort of looking into, you know, a bit of a support mm. team or structure. So there's a lot to do. I mean, even I just discovered my passport has expired. Oh, I geez, need to get my passport, a, uh, you know, renewed. And the admins <laughs> yeah, but it's all exciting. It is. Challenging because it's a really big, um, uh, you know, project. Uh, hopefully by June, July. If not, I'm I'm just gonna work and 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 I, I could leave like tomorrow if I could. Oh, God, geez, but I, I have imagine. to line everything up. That's you know, brilliant. So it'll it'll depend Looking on that when that. I've got everything lined up. That's very cool, Steve. Before we uh, before we cut it, I'd like to to just pick your brain for a few minutes around photography specific to social media. And if you can, if you can kind of touch on what, what would you tell like a small business owner, someone that has, that has got what most people have in their pocket, a cell phone, because my, my heart and my drive and my mission is to empower small business owners to help themselves or to empower people and entrepreneurs to help themselves. And so I'm always looking at ways to inform and provide insight. That's why this exists. But my my whole goal and vision is to get people like you to sit here and i want to dive into the insights you know what what is it that makes a really good photo and how if i only have a cell phone can i apply maybe just a bit of skill um or just maybe look at things slightly differently how how as a professional photographer what are the things that you would say let's say the small business owner, the entrepreneur, the content creator, what are the things we should be looking out for? How can we take better photos? How can we create better content? What is, let's say within five minutes, what is your best advice that you would be able to give a small entrepreneur, an up and coming business owner? Yeah. Okay. So first thing I guess is it depends on the type of business, the sure. type of entrepreneur, yeah. what is he trying to promote? Um, and you know, because I think that's that, sorry that that's yeah. in itself is an important one. Because, Absolutely, and and that's that's the way we function as as Aiden Media is. We don't believe in having. That's why this office is the size that it is. We don't need twenty photographers and twenty designers. Yes, we believe in collaboration. So our clients that might be specific in a, in an industry, we have collaboration and creators that we then use or leverage for that specific client well, because we know. It that your yeah. skill is in taking pictures of cars. Exactly. So yeah. let's get you projects with cars and not expect you to take yeah. pictures of people. Well, you see, so, you know, that's why professional photographers exist. Absolutely. You see, Absolutely. A, a lot of entrepreneurs or small businesses, they're trying to cut costs. Sure. They say, okay, we're not going to hire a pro. We're just going to do it ourselves. And, and then they fall short. Sure. And then the photography is doesn't look good it's subpar and so on so that's what i would suggest but but those that might have a creative flair um look instagram your website and facebook although facebook now is becoming a little bit mm, yeah i mean it's still there you still got facebook pages but all the action so to speak is more on instagram i love it i love i love it because I, I, I would, at a, maybe at a different time, we can debate that. Yeah. Because it's it's opinionated. Sure. And, and I love that. I love diving into why why do you say that? And like, why does that person say that? Like, you might not like Facebook at can all. Can I tell you why? Please. I speak to a lot of young adults and they're not on Facebook. Yeah, absolutely. They're all on Instagram. Absolutely. And they think Facebook is for the old talkies. Well, and but for, do you know how much information is on Facebook? I know. And it's I got know. The, Look, so I've much still got a Facebook. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. But I think it's the younger crowd. They're over Facebook. They're just into Instagram. I think it's like there's that instant gratification aspect as well because Facebook is filled with so much other bloat. Sure, that, absolutely. You know, Instagram, It's if I'm looking for a reel, I get reels. If well, you photos, know, that's also the big thing now in the, uh, in the last while is reels. Instead yeah. of posts, sure. it's reels like 15 second reels or 30 second reels or 90 second reels with a bit of music and you know a good soundtrack so you know yeah it's it's you know social media is the way to go to promote your business and i include my website absolutely you know it's your website it instagram and also you get third-party hosts sure. third-party hosts like 
I mean, for example, my one business is called Cape Exposure Photographic Tours. Now, that we promote as well on a third-party host called Tour HQ. Of course. So, there's a lot of third-party hosts that you can attach your website to and your other social media Absolutely. links. I would, I, would, I would almost go down the road of it's, it's more kind of um, a collaboration to a certain aspect, unless, of course, you're paying for it. Yeah. But those are all different ways to generate additional traffic because it's relevant to your to your industry. So that that makes complete yeah. sense. And then if you're a photographer or content creator, I'm sure you'd know this. You need to post every day almost. Depending. You need to have a consistent presence. That's that absolutely is consistent. If you disappear for two weeks, you're MIA. You lose that kind of tempo. The other thing that I think is. Be personal, mm. not too formal. Yes. A lot of people, there's one word I don't like, it's called revert. Revert. As <laughs> soon as I start talking to businesses or WhatsApp and they say, I'll revert to uh, you, I go, oh my word, I'm, I'm human. dealing with these Please corporate, speak you to know, me like a human. just say, I'll get back to you soon or whatever. Anyway, yeah. so I, I like that personal touch. And what I've also found is people love stories. Yeah. And I'm a great storyteller, if I can say so myself. I've got a lot of stories to tell. And so if you can get a very interesting, captivating photograph or image or content, mm. and people love behind the scenes as well. Of course. So behind the scenes, a great story, and you've got an audience that's captivated and they, they kind of follow you and follow your trip and your tour, like say my Stevie Lighthouse now, I shared the light tour, that's what I'll be doing as my personal, even my challenges, my struggles, Love whatever it. it might be. You know, I want to get honest, really right? absolutely it's honest. That's absolutely, the, yeah. yeah. You can see fake, yeah, and you I can. don't do fake. As soon as you see a lot of fake, eh? absolutely, mm. you can see if somebody or a brand is not authentic, yes. or they are kind of plagiarizing. You know, you can kind of pick it up. You can also pick up on the way uh, the content is written or presented and, uh, you know. So it's it's be authentic, be yourself, but look, you got to have talent. Of course. It's got to be top-notch content, whether it's a still photograph or a video mm -hmm. or whatever it might I think be, you know. Like, and, I, and I absolutely agree with you. The more quality we can have, the better. Yeah. Um, but I also feel like, you know, with the technology that we have and the phones that we have, I think there's really a fighting chance for for small entrepreneurs Absolutely. to get into the game, Absolutely. to start creating yeah. content, and to get their businesses up. Yeah, that's the wonderful thing about social media and yeah. Instagram and 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 mm -hmm. and Twitter. I don't really use Twitter so much. I, I use there's, Twitter there's, to get my news. There, yeah, of course, there's yeah. there's there's a platform. Each platform has very yeah. specific purposes. Exactly. So as a, as a business owner or entrepreneur, you need to know where exactly. where your people are hanging out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Stevie, it's yeah. been an incredible, an incredible opportunity here. And again, I am so grateful for this. And thank you for your time. It's an absolute pleasure, man. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Yeah.